All right, guys, welcome to the Nitty Gritty. Today, we have a very special guest. She's the reason that my wife gets out of bed in the morning. Rena Doman. the word of wisdom. Yes. We did. <laughs> We're not going to go there <laughs> because I will let everyone make their own personal choices. Right. But yes. <laughs> so Rena started Perk Energy with her husband. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Was it really your husband and your... It's just you. You, <laughs> you're, you're the brains behind it, huh? You know what? I have to give him a lot of credit. Okay, he good. is the creative. Gotcha. So honestly, if you... We've talked about Gary Vee before. Right. He's the clouds. I'm the dirt. Okay. Oh, so I am... I'm the ground. I'm the function. I'm the do the things. And he is the crazy ideas. In fact, if I could talk to you guys about some of the ideas that he has coming forward for Perk, you would die. His brain is always going. So Gary is wow. very much the creative. Right. Okay. So I just help him channel his creative. He he still does maintain a day job and I and it's okay, we can we can talk about it, but he's uh, actually a graphic design creative at Adobe. Oh wow. Yes. So he, that's That's nice to have around. Uh, yes it is. That's the day job. So has he helped with all the design for Perk then? All the design, all the catch lines that you see on the products, all the fun little taglines, everything you see, that's that's all Gary. So for those people out there that don't know, because both Andrew and I, we have wives. Well, and Andrew, right? Well, I drink it almost every day. I don't day. feel caffeine anymore. And that's that. Well, I that's don't drink a problem. it for the caffeine. Like, I drink it because I enjoy the taste well, of it. It tastes amazing, but... For those of our listeners that don't know what Perk is yet, yet they will know how how because it's not just about caffeine. Oh right? no, no. What give us a little so, short explanation? It's so fun. I will just tell you, like coming from our own consumers, people have nicknamed us Christmas in a cup, <laughs> motivation <laughs> in a mug, right? Yeah. Hug in a mug. We actually have a chill line that doesn't get talked about very much. It's just perk and chill. It's it's a relaxation recovery, but it is an experience of this tastes so good. I'm going to get crap done and I'm not going to feel bad about it. That's what we wanted to give people. How did it start? Like, what is your background that made you, I mean, were you an energy drink drinker that you're like, I want to make a, my own version of this? Were you someone that was super health conscious or was it just kind of like a, oh, let's make something? So I am super health conscious. I've come from a background, seven kids in our family. My mom was the granola before it was the thing. <laughs> people used Back to make they fun. they were crazy people? Yes. Yeah. Yes. People used to make cool. fun of me. They'd come over to my house and they're like, you're cookies are shiny and I'm like yeah that's honey my mom uses honey <laughs> but actually Perk was my husband so he and we actually have one partner his best friend they have come up with products for companies before for MLMs hmm. and just like on the side because that's not part of on, Adobe obviously yes on the side so he's always been a graphic design artist but this is this was a passion that they came up with and Gary and I are a blended family and we were newly married and he had a few products he was working on. I was the very full-time person. So I have been in the real estate industry since I was 17 years old. So for two, over two decades, I was an escrow officer. So if you have bought or sold a home, hmm. right. that person that explains the papers to you while you're signing your life away and your heart's beating fast, that was my that job. That seems too boring for you. You know what? It's so interesting <laughs> because I love... I love structure and I love that connection with people. So my huh. clients were real estate agents, loan officers. Gotcha. So Gary had designed this drink and it was originally designed for Cabela's. That's who they were pitching it for. They wanted a warm energy drink that could be for hikers, campers, hunters, fishing, something like that. Okay. So in the meantime of them trying to pitch it and work with Cabela's and bring it to them, we had a big sample batch. I brought it into my office, let some of my girlfriends there try it. Because if you've ever known anyone within that real estate industry, it is really stressful. Right. And people are bringing crap all the time. In the break room, it is cookies, treats, snacks. You're sitting around. All the time. Right. So for me, being a health conscious person, it was really hard for me to be around that all the time and to watch other people doing all that sugar and then crash and just that cycle over and over again and the caffeine and sugar and crash. So I brought a bunch in and I'm talking 
Breaking Bad Ziploc baggies <laughs> white powder. I'm so sorry if people do not know <laughs> Breaking Bad. <laughs> but that's what it was. And I'm letting people try it. And within days, maybe a week or two, I'm going into closings and I'm coming back and Ziploc baggies are gone and there's cash on my desk. And I started talking to my husband and I'm like, <laughs> something's awesome. going a, on a here. A bag of powder is there's gone. There's a bag of powder. And cash is now there. <laughs> okay. And people are snorting it now for quicker delivery. So It no, gets into the blood a little faster. Wow. Yeah. So we started talking about it and, and we thought, you know what, maybe this is ours. Maybe this is the one we invest in and we say, you know what, we're not going to share this. We're not going to sell it to someone else. We feel passionate about this because the other ones were ones that, you know, they were good products. Gary's good at what he does. But this was one that was starting to become emotional. Right. Like you talk about it. This is what gets my wife out of bed. This is what's inspiring me to do things. And we, we were might having... still be married because of your drink. <laughs> uh-huh. Do you know? And like, I'll... I think she can handle me better because of Perk. Yeah. And we hear stories all the time. That's and not, that's... that's true. It's, yeah. Have Listen, you had your don't per... judge my Have marriage, you had your Perk Andrew? today? Yeah. No, that, no, that's a, <laughs> that, that, that is a question. You can't ask your wife. That's almost as bad as saying, is it Shark Week? <laughs> well, okay. So I, I will talk from my own perspective. Okay. It's a safe space. Gary literally brings me the mug made every morning. Oh, see, Andrew? Kudos. Wow. He's got his hand raised. Yes. Good husband. Jenna wakes up. And I'm like, okay. It's like the commercial, like, you need to eat the Snicker bar. There you go. And she goes from Roseanne Bar to Jenna. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but when That's you so recognize funny. that there's that kind of an emotional response, this became our baby. Right. But in the meantime, we're still a blended family trying to make ends meet. And both of us were full-time parents. How long have you been married at this time? We had been married maybe a year or two. Oh, so I mean, you guys are still feeling each other out. Like the and kids and when stuff. When was like this? Like new brothers, ago? new sisters, right? Yeah. So this was seven, six, seven years ago. Wow. And when you it each first had, started. You each had kids coming from previous marriages. Yes. And... You know, a lot of people in situations where it's, you know, subsequent marriages, there's that time off with the other parent. You get breaks. You get to know each other. Well, Gary and I never had that. Right. So um, my husband passed away. And so I was full-time mom. And when I met him, he actually was full-time dad. He had his kids full-time. Wow. So we were right off the bat this family and trying to figure it out and trying to figure out all of those weird things. Imagine trying to date with that situation. Oh, yeah. It's wow. <laughs> it wow. makes things interesting it's because like, it's what, a What Disney movie deal. do you want to watch tonight? Yeah. <laughs> Let's get to know each other. <laughs> um, so it was, it was very much, uh, it was a hard time because my, my kids were still processing the death of their father. And there right. was a lot of things we were still working through. But at the same time... And you know what? I'll just go there already because I know you guys usually ask, but death is my motivator. And I know that might sound morbid to some people, but when you have experienced death as much as I have in my life, I mean, very uh, multiple, multiple people close to me, you start changing the way you look at life. Mm. So things that look risky aren't as risky anymore. It's more about what is going to be the biggest payoff. What is the most important thing? And so we started trying to find a way to make a living for us because when you're at the end of divorces, death, whatever it is, there's not a lot of resources left, <laughs> let's be honest. Right. So we had to find a new way late in life because Gary's also 12 years older than me to restart a life that could take care of us and our kids. Hmm. So, so, how, so how did you guys meet? So, oh... Uh, Without going too far down a rabbit hole, I'm you know what? How you it's guys so met. interesting because you even said dating. It, dating is scary. My heart right now is going out to anyone listening to this that knows anyone who is trying to date as an adult and right. a parent. It's really hard. And I was like, I am never. I'm never dating, let alone getting married. Like I had told everyone that I am. Nope. Everyone done. says that. Yep. After either divorce or which is so like this, it's the saying never say never. Yes. Because never say never. <laughs> well, and I'll be totally honest because I tell people all the time, Gary's a saint. Right. I was still very much in love with someone else. 
you know, when you, right. that was just never going to go away. Yeah, you didn't get divorced. Uh, yeah, it's a very yeah, different. Yeah, it's different uh, when you. Dynamic. So I had, I had my walls up and it was family. So he saw me at my little sister's wedding because my little sister married his nephew. Wow. So now Uncle okay. Gary is Whoa. his okay. brother-in-law. <laughs> wow. So I had this full family sign-off. Do you know what I mean? Every single person was like, hey, we've known him since day one. We can tell check, you. Check, yep. Check. We can tell you all the history because that's the scariest part is I'm bringing a stranger into my children's lives. And so that was very, that was very helpful. But I still was like, yeah, no, <laughs> right. no. He, was he interested? Oh, yes. <laughs> it's funny. He's, he's not here to uh, defend himself, but he was, he was pretty aggressive. And Atta he boy. kept, <laughs> Atta boy. which is funny. If you know him, he is the kindest, most mellow, chill guy ever, but he just kept kept trying and he reached out to me and so I finally responded to him on Facebook of all places and I was like thank you but no was it a public post <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we're, yeah we're not going <laughs> to all those. but good old days of the very beginnings of Facebook messenger and I would I just kind of said it at that I was like thank you I know they're trying to set us up but like this is not something I'm I'm really interested in right. and he just responded back and he was witty, and I was like, oh, shoot, now he's got me interested. <laughs> this went on for weeks. You notice he yourself was, flipping it. Oh, yeah, he was so funny. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he was actually in um, New Zealand um, doing some rugby things, and so right. for weeks we did that. And then when he got back, I said, oh, okay. And this was my litmus test. I'm like, sure, I'll go out with you. Let's go hike Timpanogos Cave. If you can maintain a like, conversation. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> and so that's how it happened. But more than anything, we've been best friends. And I think right. that's really important because running a business together as spouses is very taxing on a relationship. I was going to say, your your relationship's got to be stressful enough with the whole blended family thing. And now you're adding business to it. Like, that's that's impressive. Yeah, it's hard. It helps that we are very opposite personalities. Right very opposite the dirt in the mm -hmm. clouds yeah you're not clashing over certain things i'm sure when you're like that because you're not. handling one aspect he's handling another. well and when i get fired up because i'm 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 the driver and i'm i'm the right. fiery one he's very calm and you know responds appropriately and he just right. kind of goes with my moments and my my push because i've been the one really driving this well it probably helps he's a little bit older too yes because i you know i'm noticing it like you're calming down yeah some of the things I don't get mad about, I'm like, I think I would like throw a stapler against the wall five <laughs> years ago. But I mean, that's the thing. Like you just, you mellow out a little bit. So. Well, and subsequent marriages, it's funny. You're just like, you know what? It's not worth it. Right. Right. <laughs> you, know you realize, important. you realize that there's a lot of things that are just not worth the fight and you focus on what really matters. Sure. And so. Well, after, you've got your kids. You've got like. How old were you know, the there, kids there's, on both there's, sides? It's going to be hard for a man to, to... It would be hard... It'd be very easy, I think, for a mom, right? Widow, divorce, divorce whatever, to just not really care about a dude. I, not hard. It would be easy, right? Because yeah. you've got your kids. Yeah, they keep It's like, look, I don't have time mm -hmm. for you, dude. Yeah. Right? So, I mean, he must have been a pretty... He must be pretty special. He guy, is. Right? Everybody who knows him, he's he's kind of a saint. We're pretty we're pretty grateful. He's for a pretty him. cool dude. She used to tell me, <laughs> rugby player, right? And then w he was doing what in Malaysia? So he actually played for the USA Touch Rugby team. He made right. he made the team. It's a forty and over team, so it's a pretty big deal because he's in his mid fifties. Yeah. So he played, and they just they just played in so Malaysia. So he's got a great body. Obviously. He looks like he's so in that his probably 20s. helped when you met, <laughs> right? It, it does. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, the dude yes. is the he's dude a doman. Is in I shape. don't know if I've ever met a doman. So that's that actually like, he's not doman. Oh, he's not. Okay. So that's what a lot of people are always like. So what's going on here? That's so, a big BYU name. So he's Gary Brown, my husband that passed away. Oh, was Matt Doman. Well, see, there you go. Now we'll. Uh huh. Now we're gonna help squash that yes. for everybody, right? So, um, and it's really interesting because yeah, I went from the world of football. Matt right. and I were high school sweethearts. Oh, okay. um, I met him my sophomore year in high school 
and we went to rival high schools. And so he was from that the Doman like the so Doman it's, family. It's right? interesting. They they're somewhere related. Right. But he and the Domans, they even played on all star teams together. He was wow. in high school when they were. He had Lavelle Edwards at his house. Really? And um he died from addiction issues. Oh. And he was struggling then. Right. So Lavelle was very kind and encouraging to him and said, Hey, we're gonna give you full ride at Rick's. Let's see if you can kind of, you know, get your life in order so that you're able to go to BYU. Sure. You know, there were some issues. Um, so he played for Ricks for, for two years, and that's when they took the national championship, and um, that's when he was at Ricks. And uh, so I've always been a Doman. That's awesome. And so I, when we, even when we got married, like, he, Gary knew. Gary knew where my heart was at and that I was still in love with someone else and that Doman was what I was going to be forever. And I think it's hard for people to comprehend that. I think that's beautiful. I think that's a really cool thing. And the fact that you're – that that Gary is confident enough to be you know, – because yeah. some men are probably not confident enough to be like, excuse me. For sure, they would me? take it personal. So, yeah. Come on. Yeah, for sure. I think that's awesome. Yeah, Good for you. The heart is capable of amazing things. Sure. And any parent can tell you that. You have, the, <laughs> you, have a, you have another child come along. Right. You do not let love – the older child any less your heart just literally becomes capable of even more love and so when i, I have tell something to work on then uh, <laughs> i love every different every child differently in my family i'm just kidding sorry yeah oh but you I do like not love every them. child differently yeah How you about don't that? love them love any them less the but right. the heart is capable of and so i i'm very open with the fact that i'm very much in love with 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 two men sure and that it's fine and that's a good thing and it's very healthy and it's good for my kids because it allows them to still be very in love with their dad also and to still be okay with this other father figure that's been in their life who they love also so it's it's a very um no one's being replaced no one's being replaced. this is one of the coolest things i've ever heard i mean because i so i come from both my parents are on their third marriage and so I've been through a lot of that stuff yeah. as a kid. I mean, my parents were divorced as well. Right. So we've all and it's just like, yeah, it's hard. like coming from that perspective, like I think that is very, a very, very enlightened way of thinking. I, I, I've never heard anything like it. Has it taken you a while to get cool. there? It, it hasn't Maybe not to get there, but to be able to communicate it. That's the difference. I have always felt it, but it's, it's hard for a lot of people. And so I have found when I was first trying to explain, it was, it was almost hurtful for people. They felt a need to pick a side, mm. you know, mm. people who were from my past and who knew Matt. Well, they loved him. You, you couldn't not love him. He was bigger than life and just this amazing, dynamic, wonderful, fun person that you just you just loved him and so people who knew matt it was so hard for them to think how can you go on but then the people from my future since then are like gosh gary is such a saint how can you still be in love with this other person so trying to find peace with that concept it's been harder for other people than it has been for me so i've just been slower at talking about it um is it something you and gary talk about like as far as like how you want to talk about it yes and I'll never forget, we had a moment, and you know, this is, I haven't shared this with very many people, but we had a moment when we were very first dating where I felt an obligation to be really upfront with him. Like, there was, there's not marriage or anything talking. This is just dating, right. and we're starting to get close. And I told him, I said, you do know that this is not a normal situation like most people that are out in this dating field. I said, I'm still in love with someone else. Sure. And it was really interesting because of the friendship we had built, built, he said, I know, you know, and so it's not like there's been huge in-depth conversations, but it was just an acknowledgement of, I know where your heart's at, but he's always said, but I know how you feel about me. And that's been good. We're very respectful of each other. We're very respectful of our relationship and making sure that we're building that by still allowing space to talk about something that's still there and still very sure. real. When you lose someone, love doesn't stop. Right. You know, and um, my kids are, they were very young. They were, um, 
gosh, 14, 9, and 5, 6 years old. So I have three kids. And so they were really young. And so it's been very good for them to live in an environment where it is so okay to talk about dad. That's so important. So okay to talk about dad. And, and do, not that we, not only do we talk about him, we celebrate him. We right. have celebrated his birthday every year. We go to the funeral or to the cemetery together. And he's very, Gary's very supportive. In fact, I can't tell you, there's probably been four or five times where I've just been a mess. And he's like, hey, I knew you guys were going. I went and got flowers. Jeez, I'm falling in love with this scary guy. <laughs> I mean, really. I, yeah. Not really that I'm falling in love with him, but I mean, he's a he's that's a special guy. I know. It, it's so funny because I know he was supposed to come today and he didn't. And it allows me to talk about this piece because if he was here, I would have gotten lost in you guys and BYU talk because that's his <laughs> love. He would have been so happy. <laughs> this is the stuff we want to talk. I mean, yeah, BYU yes. is awesome. But <laughs> I mean, this. I think this is our favorite part about doing the podcast is... Everyone loves Perk Energy. It tastes amazing. But what's yeah. the story? And that's, there are always incredible stories behind everything. Right. So, right. so when we get back to that, like talking about Perk, I was still in recovery myself because it, like we got, we were married and everything's still raw and me losing my husband, you know, Gary was very supportive. And honestly, we, we say how he kind of saved us and helped us through the first couple of years. Right. Um, I watched a lot of people that were close to me, people at work and people in my sphere of influence, which at that point were, you know, young moms. And I watched everyone just barely making it from day to day. And all of a sudden I had offered them something that not only gave them some energy, but it felt like a treat because that's the hardest part. We want to reward ourselves. When things are hard, when things are low, you just want a little bit of a treat. But you don't want to feel guilty about it. Right. So I thought. You don't want to crash either, right? Right. And so I thought, my gosh, we have tapped into something that is so needed. Right. How did he come up with the formula of it, though? I mean, he'd done other products. That's what I'm interested about. Yes. Like, how do you. Did he kind of reverse engineer it? Or well, he's like, a graphics designer at Adobe. Yeah. I know. And you're talking like he's creating an energy. Like, why would he create a hot <laughs> yeah. energy drink for Cabela's? Like, did Cabela's call him? Did he have experience doing that before? So he had experience doing that before. So if you remember, in fact, we'll go back here. I won't even say names or stuff. But all of us remember the little kiosks in the mall with the little packets that go in water that gave you energy. Those flavors no, came from really. Gary. Wait, Did they really? Hold on. <laughs> That's where he started was helping them come up with flavors. This this other company that he um, worked but with. But like even that though, like he's not like a like a scientist or anything like that. He's like, how does he know what to put together? Like, yeah, he'd done it before, but how did he originally do it? Well, so if you're in the health and wellness world, I was going to say supplements, things like that. You start looking and understanding certain ingredients. And the one thing about Gary, yes, he's this graphic designer, but he is a consumer of information. Right. Right. So Gary gets up at probably about four o'clock every day. And he, that's not me. (laughs) Nope. Um, so he probably has at least an hour and a half to two hours by himself every morning and he just consumes information and he's kind of always been this way. So there were some key things that he knew he wanted in a drink. He also, believe it or not, is probably the biggest consumer of perk. We won't even talk about how many scoops a day that guy has. <laughs> and Maybe luckily, I just need to up my scoops I know. to Lu- feel it. Luckily, yeah. we have a, a get you going and a calm you down because right. he, he needs both. But I need to get the calm down. We only have to get you going. Yeah. Oh, the chill. But so what's so funny though is because like caffeine doesn't affect me. I'll drink it at ten o'clock at oh, night and then go too. to bed. Mm-hmm. Just because the caffeine doesn't affect me, I like like the hot drink before bed. What is it like? It's funny how it absorbs different with other people. Because Ashley, it's just like, oh, no. oh there it is. Like, oh, Jen is the same. Back. She'll yes. take her first sip and yep. she's like, go. Maybe we're over That's caffeinated. Me. What like? <laughs> or maybe I just need to put more in because I'm more tolerant to it. I'm going to try that. I'm going to double the dose on oh, Gary. He's he's probably double scoop every morning, one to two scoops in the afternoon. Okay, I'm going to try depending that. Depending on what's going on. Yeah. Okay. Um, one of the, Good to know. So he had the experience with the antioxidant, EGCG, right. from the other other products he had made. 
caffeine's a no-brainer. I think we all need to wear the shirt that says my drug of choice. Caffeine. Right, right. Yeah. That's where we're at. But the taste was really important to him. And so that's something they worked on. And it's funny, you go out there, any other companies, and they just order a flavor from a flavor house. That's it. Gotcha. And we said, no, this is important. We want to see every single spice in there, which is so funny because people will message us and they're like, I, I just had your chai, but there was floaties in it. And we're like, those are spices. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's not all dissolving. Yeah. So it's funny. We People look at it as something revolutionary, but really what we've done is go backwards. I mean, at the heart of it, a hot drink is something that has been overwhelmingly accepted for millions of years by billions of people. I think it's, we're the only country in the world that, like, you can hardly find ice anywhere else. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you go to yeah, China, countries. South America, UK, everything is. It's warm uh, all the it's, time. It's yeah. tea. Mm -hmm. It's a hot drink after a meal. You know, there's all sorts of things that say it's way better for you than shoving cold, cold liquid down there and solidifying everything. And anyway, yeah. And I, I mean, don't want to, I, I don't want to sound too, I got to be careful because I do, I do teach yoga and Pilates. So sometimes my, my yoga-ness will, Your yogi will, comes come, out. will come out a little bit, <laughs> but honestly for me, a hot drink it's it's an invitation to pause right it's an invitation to breathe and i think that message has actually come across really well we will look at our comments and they're really unsolicited if you go and look at our instagram people are just telling us stories all day long about passionate stories yes passionate stories uh, my son was in for cancer treatment and I sit there with my mug and I hold it and I breathe and I pause and I take a breath or, you know, I'm a stressed out mom. And in the morning, this is my time and I read and I pause and I drink. And I think that we are in the society of go, go, go. And we miss that invitation to pause. And even if it's a split second, it's powerful. So we've given something that is not only delicious, warm, but there's a health benefit too. And we just told you, it's okay. Pause. Right. Take were, a sip. Were you that aware when you started it that you wanted to give people the invitation to pause? Like, were you, did you know that that's what you were trying to give to people when you Which created it? Which that's kind of a conflicting statement if I'm you think give you about an energy, it. I'm, I'm yeah. going to give you a caffeinated yeah. beverage a and pause. And right? pause and pause at the same time. <laughs> But it is kind of true. I mean, it's true. But did you have that? Were you intentional from day one? I, you know, I don't know if Gary was that intentional from day one, but I saw it firsthand. And I immediately... Because you were experiencing I it. I was experiencing it. I watched it with the women at work. And I watched it with my friends. And then here we were a couple months out from that trial batch. And I'm getting messages from people that are legitimately angry. <laughs> How could you introduce me to something like that that I can't get more of? <laughs> like it was, it was really it's real, and I started man. feeling bad. And in in the process of from that original batch to us getting messages, I had made the personal decision to quit my career, and it was scary. I perk was not even like on the table then I just knew deep in my gut I needed to quit this job that I had done for two decades I had a very big following my clients were loyal they were wonderful the money was good it was consistent but uh, my son my oldest was starting his senior year of high school and they had just made changes within our church saying that uh, the mission age was going to be changed. And he was planning on going on a mission. And something hit me really hard and said, this is your last chance with him. And I was a very busy mom. I wouldn't, if you've ever been within that world of, of escrow real estate, I wouldn't get home till 6, 7 o'clock at night. Gary was running a lot of the stuff at home. And I just knew I needed to be home well and that's something you wow. can't sell it's not a business that you can sell for a big pop it's something you kind of have to walk away from yep you know it's like you're walking away from two decades of hard work and yes. relationships and it was it was scary and we talked about it and i just told gary i said we're gonna figure it out we'll make things work but i know i'm supposed to be at home now so he started working more and i came home and i don't regret that decision at all the time i had with my oldest when he would get out of um, high school be 
between when the two younger ones would get home was priceless. He then decided to do military also. So he went straight Your from son. my oldest son. Okay. Yes. So he went straight from day one of high school graduation straight into boot camp. Wow. Straight to his job training in the military, straight to airborne jump school. Whoa. And during that time, had put in his papers for his mission and then went to Africa. So I lost my oldest son for three years. And so I know it was the right decision. And I really, really believe that when we follow our gut, the right things happen. And so things started coming together to make Perk possible. We had this organic push from friends and, and colleagues that are like, you guys need to do this. So we started going through the process of finding the manufacturing and, and figuring out the website and doing that. So we were part, started putting these pieces together. And I thought if it works, it's supposed to work and it's going to be great. And if it doesn't, then I'll do something else. But I just know that my place is supposed to be home right now. And wow. so I had that time with my kids and so while my son was away um, on his mission, Perk launched. Wow. Was it difficult to find the manufacturer? I mean, or did your husband kind of have some He ties? had some relationships. And that's the beauty of this area here. You would Can be you just blown here? away. The, yeah. the companies that fulfill for so many of the biggest supplement companies they're right here right. in utah so it's a very special place to be an entrepreneur very and everyone is so willing to help and there, there are some so that kind of hold willing. it close yeah but for the most part everyone is kind of the abundance mentality yes and it's i will do whatever i can to help you because more times than not someone did that for them and so they're always willing to kind of pay it forward yes and continue to try and kind of grow kind of that next generation of entrepreneur. We were so lucky to have so many people who were down this road a little bit ahead of us. And so we had a lot of support. And so it was it was really great. So we launched Perk, not knowing anything about social media first off. I look back at some of those first posts on Instagram and I was like, oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> so embarrassing. Um, but that was actually three years ago last week. So Just Perk, last week. Yes. Yeah, so Perk is three years old. Three years old. <laughs> you know, I, the part that's that jumps out to me is just following your gut. I think that's the thing that ninety eight percent of the world struggles with, right? That yes. that first risk, getting that feeling, mm -hmm. you know, trusting and, yourself and, enough to follow. Right, it. and then and then just saying, you know what, go. Yeah. And that I mean, that's the difference between an entrepreneur and somebody that isn't right and then just going because that's a lot of risk you're walking away from a very very um you know you've got a lot of experience with the escrow thing you've got a lot of clients i'm sure you had a lot of return it was probably to the point where you didn't really have to search for business anymore it right. just kind of kept it coming was in. it was easy you'd already suffered loss you've already you know blending these families like you got all these things going on your kid's about to leave and it's just like you know what i'm gonna quit i need you had a lot of reasons kid. not to do it right but in that same breath, though, because of the loss, it's amazing how things many things didn't became, matter. Right. They just didn't matter. And it was really interesting. So now my second son, he is currently at boot camp right now. Oh, really? That's one that will make me cherry. I can't really go there. Right now. Um, I cried on the podcast two oh weeks ago, and I'm 400 pounds. So it's okay. <laughs> okay. Let it out. Um, a lot of people were kind of confused and um, questioning my boys going into the military. And I said, they found something that not only can create a good future for them, sure. but it's something they're passionate about because when, so I, uh, my husband and I would have celebrated 20 year anniversary last summer and I pulled out our, our wedding pictures and our, right. our wedding video and everything. And there's a certain picture of all of us standing on the temple stairs. And a third of the people in that picture are gone. Wow. That's the kind of loss I've seen in the last 20 years. Holy cow. And so because we talk about that so much in our home, I am constantly encouraging my children, 
yeah, do something that could, you know, provide a career, but more importantly, do something that gives you passion in life. 100%. That because I said, you're not going to be happy. And it, and it was, it was Matt who taught us that his struggles, I still believe could have been better had he been more allowed to just follow his heart versus being pushed into a job he was an amazing provider he was a great worker but you want to know what he wanted to do he wanted to be a high school football coach and he would have been amazing and he would have been happy but the high stress of a career and doing something that was that he was not passionate about that he didn't love it made the day-to-day so hard for him And so I tell my kids all the time, this is not about titles or money. It is about being good humans. And what are you going to do that makes you happy and makes it a better world? You'll always be more successful if you're happy. Like we've learned that, especially with the podcast. You know, it's amazing. It's like, it's like uh, Jared with the Lego, right? Yes. Lego. (laughs) He was just doing something that he thought was cool and fun, but he was so good at it because it was cool and fun and he loved it. That now he gets flown all over the country and paid all this money to basically do Lego stop animation. Barbecue is the same thing for me. Yeah. Like it, it's, you know, the other thing that really jumps out that is so, oh, it drives me insane. What is it about someone's decision to do something that everyone else feels like they have a right to? They talk have a about right it. to, like, that is such. What's the word I'm looking for? Like anybody serving in the military that is. Like who are you Such to- an incredible decision and a selfless de- decision and an ad- admirable, so admirable to, to be to do what they're doing. And for anyone to say, like, why would they do that? Well, I think we've had so much support. I mean, them serving and being the soldiers that they are, it, it truly is amazing. I could go on and on to talk about the military. Those men and women are uh, such amazing human beings. I think more than anything, a lot of people, if you haven't experienced loss, fear to you can be paralyzing. Absolutely. Where if you really have experienced loss, fear to us is actually more of a motivator. Yeah. So they think, why would you want your boys to do something that puts them at risk at d- of dying when you have already lost so much? And I thought, and I tell them, it's because their dad died that I am telling them, there's 100%. no guarantees. There's no guarantees in life. So you go do something right now that it makes you feel fulfilled because you don't know what's, uh, what's going to happen. And that was kind of the thing with Perk. We should have been more scared, maybe. <laughs> but we, I, I wasn't. I wasn't because I thought this feels right. What a blessing. I mean, that's a huge blessing. I keep thinking of the Tim McGraw song, Live Like You Were Dying, or yeah. what's that song called? That's it. I mean... It's so true. I mean, to be able to, we all have different ways of assessing risk or not even thinking about the risk. But that right there is something that I think everyone can relate to. It's like, hey, you know, when you realize that you have a finite time to do things, you do have a very different perspective. And it's like, hey, if you've got something you love, go for it. Yeah. You know, why not? And I'm to the point where... If you have a roof over your head. Yeah. Yeah. And if you have food to eat and you have family members who love you, everything else is a bonus. Yeah. Yep. It's that perspective. Everything else is a bonus. Yeah, I, well, was talk- I was talking to someone who he was in the army for eight years and I asked him like, what did you take away from that? He's like perspective. He's like, when I'm having a bad day, I can say no one's shooting at me today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, really. like, like, like when really. I'm having a bad day, no one's trying to kill me today. Yeah. I think I can get through this, you know? And so as a business owner, entrepreneur, you have to be able to find that perspective and Mm -hmm. find the things you're grateful for. That's what I love about what Kim White talked about with her gratitude journal. Yes. Every day she would write things that she was grateful for, you know, because every day is a blessing for her. Every day really is, you know, and we've talked to other people that have battled stuff and you, you have to, you have to be grateful for what you've been given in order to kind of move forward and find something else. I, I believe that. I mean, are you, are you kidding? I, we're now making a living and a, and a lifestyle and, and security financially for our family with something where people message me daily and share 
how much it helps them personally. Right. Like, yeah, I've cried on Instagram. That's happened. Good. Yes. What's wrong with that? <laughs> but it's, it's because the, I am so feeling. grateful. Yeah. I am so grateful that I get to touch other people's lives that way in something that's, it seems so simple, but I tell them all the time, I'm like, it's literally a hug coming from us to you. Like, that's really how we feel. If Gary could respond to every single customer service person, if in the beginning he dropped off the orders, you guys, like it was, <laughs> and if he, that's if amazing. he could, if he could still do that, he would, because that's how we feel. Like it's, we're, we're to the point, we talked about it the other day, that we're sad that we don't know all the customers' names. Because right. for the first, you know, six months to a year, we would recognize names and we're like, oh, they ordered they again. Ordered again. <laughs> like it was, it was such that's a big awesome. deal and we wanted to hug each of them and, it, I just, I just, I'm just blown away every morning to think this is what I get to do. It's Very just cool. really amazing. Well, I think it's important for people to realize too. It's amazing how many tweets we've been getting about like, this has motivated me. I've had this idea forever, and I just need to. You don't have to give up everything to start your idea or to start your dream or start living well, or, or putting this idea into it's action. Just take the next step. You right. know what I like, mean? Like someone's going to hear your story, and it's. They might not go start a business, but maybe they get out of bed that day. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. Maybe what they're going through, it gives them a different perspective for what someone else, or maybe you give them courage to say, hey, if she can do this, I can do this. You know, and that's the coolest thing of this type of platform is you can reach so many different people. And I mean, you're experiencing it when people are telling you, it's silly to think that a drink can really impact someone's right. life. It's silly. <laughs> But it's so true. You know, I look, my wife drinks it twice a day and is in love with it. And it's like, maybe this is just my perspective, but what is it about women that have really latched onto it? Is, or is it not that? Because your husband yeah. drinks it, you drink it, Andrew. I, I do. I drink it every day. And maybe I need to drink it, but, but I, I just find that, and I have my ideas why that is. Okay, I, I want to I, I I hear know what your ideas, are. but I'm going to go back to my little bit of my, my yogi moment. Go do it. I like <laughs> Because it's interesting. People think the same thing about yoga, right? That it's more of a women thing. Right. For sure. Um, it's hard, by the way. And it's I just so don't want to fart in it, front of that many girls. It's so hard. You know? <laughs> and it can be hard. But for all of my, my years of yoga and going through yoga teacher training and the whole process, do you want to know what the whole point of yoga is? breathe right 100 percent. just breathe and so i think that women when they have moments and they feel something emotional they're a little more willing to to share hey i man when i was sipping this the other day and oh it was so great and i had this moment i don't think it's that men don't have those i think that women are just more inclined to talk about it because i can't tell you how many times i get messages I have to order again. My husband found it and he drank it all. Like it, <laughs> it happens all the time. So it's not that the men aren't drinking it. Men, we know you're drinking it. Right. It's like a hot bath in a cup. <laughs> <laughs> a right? A hot bath in a cup. That's so, awesome. So let me bubble ask you bath. this. A or, hot, okay. A bubble, a bubble bath. Because the right. treat and everything, it's all there. Uh, gotcha. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Hot bubble bath and a candy bar. No. So With the, with the Epsom salt. So, yeah. tea. <laughs> so have you guys noticed whenever you see somebody like drink a coffee, especially a woman on TV. You're going to start noticing this now that I say this. I know you're There's going. There's always a two-hand grab and a deep breath, right? It's like, like, like after the exactly. sip, it's like, oh. They grab the handle, yep. right, of the mug. They wrap their uh -huh. opposite hand around the mug. What is it in every movie, <laughs> TV show, when a woman has like a hot cup of coffee or tea or whatever, it's always just like, it's almost like they're hugging it with their hands. It's an experience. It is an emotional experience. But it's the same thing when women eat a treat. And so I was, that was my whole thing. We've just brought this together. Right. You're going to have your treat. And it's going to be warm. And it may give you a little boost. And you're not going to feel guilty about any of it. Did you notice how... How you changed when you were mm -hmm. explaining that? Oh, it, I feel it. It's, it, it it's, was like, it's, it's going to be warm. Yes. <laughs> and you're going to feel it. Well, if, like, and, if I'm so calm right now. <laughs> it makes presents for Jenna so easy because everything evolves around Perk. So right. we have all sorts of different mugs. We have different types of frothers because yes, that's frothers, the best. Life changing. That is the best way to make it, by it the is. way. It really is. We, that's why we made Perk frothers. We got. 
the electric kettle so Jenna can set the exact temperature that she wants to drink her perk at it. so I she can turn it, it on so and much. walk away and it will hold that temperature for 60 minutes so just right. in case the kids get in the way right she knows that she can get her cup I mean it, it makes my job so easy <laughs> like because all I have to you do is you are going to love what we have coming this fall this just oh. feels like a, a really long infomercial. <laughs> like this is super emotional for everyone around the table. Right. So. Well, and I think it's a, it's so real though. It's very real. It is real in my so my perspective. Yes. I think being a mom is the hardest job in the world. Absolutely. Amen. I mean, one hundred percent. And I'm not just saying that to kiss up, right? right. I'm married. I don't need any <laughs> accolades from women, right? I have mine. I love her. It, it's the it, it is the hardest job in the world. And so, but now I have a slightly changed perspective based on what you said. It's not just about the pick me up. I never no. thought of it as that moment, right? Like that break, right? Yeah. A micro bubble bath. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I mean, that is a really, really interesting, you know, picture. Pay attention next time she's drinking it. She's having a moment. It is. Right. It's true. Yeah, it's just it's like you look invitation. so happy. It's she, you never invitation. look at me like that. No. Nope. Why can't you look at me the way that you look at your perk? <laughs> just imagine. She doesn't <laughs> imagine me. You don't make her that's frog that way. Add. He doesn't, she doesn't look at me the way she Let's make a perk. commercial of just like her looking at her husband just like. But then the husband pulls that perk. And then he pulls out the like, perk, <laughs> hands it to her. She looks at it and goes, oh, it's so warm. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I, but that's interesting. But I'm gonna I'm gonna drink it for a week now. I'm gonna see Do where it. that takes me because it give, tastes amazing. It you gotta it, give the chill. It's it's so okay. talk about the too. other stuff. So all I know about this is not an infomercial, but I right. am genuinely curious. We have the chai, which is kind of so we have two lines. We have an energy line, and okay. the other and the energy has two flavors. So the chai, which everyone loves, and we just launched a Mexican hot chocolate. Which people or cold chocolate? I had it oh, cold. It was amazing. They're both cold. Yeah, you can do both cold or right. hot. What? The Mexican hot chocolate. Hold on, you can drink them cold and they're still yeah. good. Oh, there's hot. There's coffee and iced ice coffee. Chai? That's the only thing I don't like about it is like when it's 98 degrees outside no. and Let's I'm do like iced. chugging like a hot Make a drink. Smoothie, I'm like, oh man. my gosh, this is hot. In fact, this is so funny because we've gotten this this conversation on Instagram so many times. Gary is drinking that chai every morning without fail, 4:35 a.m. People are like, so do you drink it every morning? I said, actually, no. My very my very favorite time to drink it is two to three. And the women out here and the moms out here that are listening, they right. know what I'm talking about. It's the after lunch It crash. is the witching uh, hour. <laughs> no, it's true. I'm glad you said it. They've just... <laughs> if, you're a, if you're an at-home mom, they've just walked in the door. Right. If you're a working mom, there is still crap on your desk. Sure. It is the witching hour. You are, you're, you want a treat. You want to be nice to your children or your clients. You want to be alone. Yeah, <laughs> potentially. <laughs> but if you're at home and you need to do homework, mm, you need to be patient. Right. You need to have all your wits about you. And so I have my chai at that time every day. Interesting. And that's how I deal with homework and children and all the stuff going on and now i've got teenagers and it's the crew because they right. don't go anywhere without each other right. you're going to need to be nice to the crew <laughs> right but when i was working that was the i gotta make it to five o'clock well i think everybody that's working that's yes. i mean that is the hardest time of the day like an hour after lunch your food's processed yep. yes you're starting to crash it's heavy you're it's tired. when most Two, people go left. for that treat yeah that uh -huh. stuff that's laying around and then they beat themselves up afterwards which is not fun that's not what you want right so that's my favorite and but right now iced iced chai three o'clock it's magic okay and there's I'm a lot more the there's a lot more to perk than just the caffeine right yes so th what was really important for me the ingredient that was my baby was collagen right and as we get older, our bodies, especially women, just lose collagen. So that's your hair, your skin, your nails, your joints. So important. So it has the collagen in there with the protein. And then it's got the antioxidant EGCG. That's what everyone talks about when they talk about why green tea is so good for you. It's because that antioxidant is in it that helps boost your metabolism. And then it does the nighttime one. And we say nighttime, but it's not going to make you tired. It is a chill Just calms out. Just down. Relax. I'll have to try that one. So this one's this one. one's really important. And I say all the time, I say chill doesn't get all of the 
credit that it deserves because people are so relaxed afterwards they forget to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like the middle kid. It hey, just happy gets people forgotten. don't say anything. Like that's You're right. Like it, it's funny. For every bad review you may get, there's. 50 happy people, right? Yeah. But when you're happy, you just order the product again. You don't necessarily go on but Yelp. But the people and, yeah. who get the chill, they're, they are probably even more diehard than our, our wow. energy people. Do you but see people do both? Or are they usually oh, one or the yes. other? Yes. There, if you see orders, in fact, right now, it is the trifecta. It's one chai, one Mexican hot chocolate, one mint hot chocolate. Day made. We even had people do posts. They're like, here's your perk schedule for the day. Wow. <laughs> Here's your morning, here's your mid-afternoon, here's your evening. And we've got we've got a new we've got a new flavor coming out of the chill this fall and I can't I yes, can't you can. I can't talk about wow. it yet. That's always happens to us. It's I always know. so close. But usually we get them to tell us They'll after tell the us mics after. Are off. <laughs> yep. Cuz we're it's, trustworthy. It's going to rock people's world and it it's, it's it's exactly what everyone's looking for. I need something that tastes so amazing at night and isn't going to give me a sugar crash and it's going to be healthy for me and it's going to help me relax it's that experience again it is i just survived another day kids are in bed work's done yes right breathe it's like my bowl of cereal (laughs) you know (laughs) <laughs> and this I, it's like my victory lap. It's like, oh, I'm going to have a bowl of cereal yeah. tonight it's my, because I it's did It's the it. only bubble <laughs> bath that I fit in, Andrew. Yeah. Okay? It's the only bubble bath that I fit in. I, this is another reason we need to get cameras on this podcast because this is something that just keeps jumping out at me. When you talk about Perk, this may sound like an infomercial. I think the reason that it may that we're talking about Perk so much is because you can just see it like – explode out of oh, you like, like you're, you're like she's excited so happy i, I, I mean it I is really contagious am. it makes me and happy. this is what passion looks like yeah right you know i think passion i've said this before it can get a little overused you can tell me that you like my food but if you get seconds or if you order another batch of perk yes. then i know that you're passionate about it, that you or like it but the when warm hug drink. It, right like it's a it's, and just so you know all those hashtags came um completely on their own that's what has been so fascinating for us about this process we have not paid for marketing good for you we have not paid anyone ever to post that means you're ahead of the game and so but i'm sure you've traded some value like that's something i learned from gary the gary v stuff now right yeah I've naturally done this a lot, and I didn't know I was doing it, but trading value, Absolutely, right? absolutely. Yeah, there's the people who are like, I love this, and we're like, right. here, here's some more, and you tell your friends sure. about it and yeah. share, and, and so that, but that, every, all of it's happened so you're ahead organically. Of the game. So who's in charge of your social? Me. You? You do a great job. <laughs> it's awesome. You've, Thank you've, you. you've grown a great community. I have been so lucky. They talk about content all the time, and, and we have a, a, a good friend. I hope she's not going to kill me for mentioning her, but I've, I don't know if you follow. Anna is the worst. Kids are the worst. Uh-uh. Is she you? the one that hides in the closet and like eats? No, you gotta go. You gotta <laughs> go follow. Jenna shows me like hide in the closet, and like you just see like these little fingers like sticking underneath the door. Oh, that's really funny. <laughs> oh, you will like. Kids are the worst. Okay. So Anna has um, a few accounts, but she brilliant. also is brilliant at social media and, you know, she talks about content and like I follow her plan and, and I see people reaching out to her all the time asking about how do I get content? How do I make it? And I'm looking at my DMs and my stories and people are just giving me content mm-hmm. all day long because they're tagging us and everything because they feel passionate. Like it's easy for me to be passionate when I have this natural boost every day of people going, I love this. This is this is this is what it did for me. This is why I perk. That's a hashtag too. I like it. This is why I perk. <laughs> this perk is why is I perk. Um, but it, you it's, know you've made it when you become a verb. That's right. <laughs> but it, it's it's great, and it and that's the other thing. I'll tell you honestly, I do love perk, and I love our product, I and I love what we do. But the connections that we have made with other people through this product have been the greatest perk of this whole thing <laughs> truly i have been so blown away with the people that we've been able to come in contact with wow. like just just even being here today and having a platform to share our process and what we've been through i couldn't have imagined that we would have something like this so that's the people is the greatest thing sure so if i were to ask gary he's the clouds you're the dirt yes where is this going 
what what is the cloud oh. what is the cloud oh of perk? boy if you ask him he's gonna tell you all kinds of crazy <laughs> things uh, honestly you guys i get random packages from amazon of of food items that he's like this is our next flavor the stuff that he comes up with is crazy and it's going other places there's there's going to be cold things there's going to i can't even i can't even tell you but his his clouds they're big and they're beautiful <laughs> I just thought of the Seinfeld line. <laughs> we got to get this guy in here. It'd be so fun to see the contrasting personalities, right? We got to put that line on a t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> That's been one of the most maybe surprising things about this is we've talked to a lot of the entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. We always need to have the spouse in. Uh, yes, agree. We it's so true. Because to, we had that with Susie with yeah. Hey Grill Hey. Like, and that it was, was pretty so cool. so fun. Because yeah. they all, they're so critical. I mean, even if they're not in the day-to-day, they still play such a big role. But Huge. when they are in the day-to-day, like, Gary, come on, man. You don't have a job. Just kidding. You really do. You're in Adobe. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> he doesn't need Adobe anymore. <laughs> come on. Just perk and chill, Gary. You walked you walked away from the real estate thing. Let's go, I Gary. know. It, and it, at some point, he probably will have to give up the day job, but he really enjoys sure. his job there. And he is a man that if I can do it, well, honestly, both of us are. If, if there is physically a way to do it, and if there's time in the day, we both are, yes, okay. Right. Like, I've, I've agreed to more things than I probably ever should have because I'm such... I don't know if it's FOMO or what it is, but I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm doing, I'll do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you're I'm going to do that. You're a great <laughs> spokesperson for your brand, too, because obviously you love it. You're passionate about it. You're fit, right? It's funny. I just realized that her sister. Yes, my sister, my hero. Oh, yeah. She was showing me some videos. Yep. Like, so my son do- now does Muay Thai and Jiu-Jitsu at Wasatch Combat. Yes. Right? And your sister owns that. She's the owner. She is. I saw her she kick a, a punching bag. She was a professional MMA fighter. One of the first females ever. She was professional MMA fighter before they even allowed them in right. the UFC. She's amazing. She's fought at big cards here at UVU and things. Um, all while she was a single mom with a handicapped son. Now, Do you yeah. know what's great? One last comment real quick. What's great about her is watch her kick a bag. Like it's the first thing that pops up on their like Facebook commercial, yes. but then you meet her. She's the sweetest, yes, nicest. Mm-hmm. Like you could totally tell their family. <laughs> like they're just sweethearts. We need to get her to come on. It, what is it about the UFC? Like so, I know a lot of uh-huh. the guys that train there, like Court and Brock and Rams, like all these guys. They're also nice. Good, good. There's something good about people. knowing when you can kick someone's ass. Yes, <laughs> you don't need to fake it anymore. Like you can just be nice. Yep. Like even if someone's like beefing their chest out, you're like, "It's okay, man. Don't worry about it. You don't. You don't. We don't need to fight. Let's just have a good day." But in the back of their head, it's like, "But if you want to, it's the Kafusi kindness. I will kill you yeah. in three seconds, yeah. and you just you don't even know. You just think I'm this nice guy or girl, yeah. right? So anyway, very. I mean, obviously, there's something to this family, right? Well, I can yeah. say cause hippy dippy might have been pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Mama Bear's looking pretty smart right now. She, she's pretty. Well, amazing. don't you have a family? I, I mean, multiple siblings are. And entrepreneurs, right? Jenna was saying something like kind of you have a, a family of it. Well, so within my family, uh, my sister owns her own gym. Um, and then I'm trying to think we're the only entrepreneurs. My father's been in real estate his whole okay. life. Okay. And he's had uh, companies also that he's been a part of. So I grew up in a house where money was never a guarantee too. So I think that kind of helped. Sure. Like I always knew that if you're going to take care of yourself financially, you better Got to get out you better hustle. do something yourself. Yeah. So I, I mean, I started working when I was 15 years old and was out, you know, on my own and managing a frozen yogurt store when I was 17 years old. So that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Well, and to be where you are dealing with so much loss too, I think that says a lot about your character. I think it, a, a person can go one of two ways, right? When you deal with a lot of loss, you can just kind of shut down and shut the world out and just go in a cave, right? Yeah. But you went the other way. I know I kind of jumped, but I always am fascinated at what drives like the entrepreneurial spirit. Like what, what, what helps somebody overcome the risk that, that of, of jumping off the cliff. Right. And I think that that's, I think this is very, very unique compared to the other people that we've talked to. Maybe the only one that could compare would be Kim, right? Cause 
Kim White, I mean, she was told she only had a couple months to live yeah. two or three different times. Yeah. But for you to take that loss and, and instead of shutting down saying, you know what, I've got finite number of days and you just never know. So it's like, what? why just stick with the mundane, just do what you got to do to survive? Like, we might as well be doing what we love. Mm-hmm. And gosh, that's a cool story. Well, and, it, and you t- talk about my sister. I mean, that's both of us. It was... It's been probably a little over 15 years since my brother died and Ugh. and it's been really motivating for both of us you know we we you don't want these people that you've lost to disappear you want to continue to keep them at the forefront of your heart and your mind and by using their their loss or their example or their life to move you forward like that's what keeps them present right well and it's your loss too and that's yeah. why i always say our biggest trials a lot of times are our greatest rewards like our trials end up benefiting us. We don't see it in the moment, but I think if we can learn to see it in the moment or yes. maybe learn to sit back and go, what is this going to, like, what good can I take from this? Yeah. They're always as good. Always. always. Like you think of losing your brother or your husband in that moment, that would be devastating. But now you look back and something really amazing has happened because of what you learned as a person from dealing with those things. And I think that a lot of the people that were the example for me, it, I saw them not become victims of a tragedy or a loss. It became their motivation. And yeah. that's what it's been for us. And that was when my, when my husband passed away, that was the very first thing I thought of was, it is now my job to make sure that my children take this as their one of their reasons in life to live, to to be great, to um, not protect their heart, to just be big out instead of it being their excuse. Right. I never wanted my children wow. to be the kids who said, "Well, but my dad died." Yeah. I don't. Wow. I didn't want that for them. I wanted them to live big, and so watching both my boys be military now, and I, my daughter is an amazing little singer and actor, and watching watching them pursue their dreams like that's what i always wanted i wanted them to use it as a reason to live big yeah my favorite quote my business coach i work with she says events only have the meaning that you give them exactly and so you can you can give whatever meaning you want to to whatever event is happening at that time and so you've given a positive motivational meaning to all of the loss and all these events in your life. And to your point, you're trying to give that to your kids so they don't give it a different meaning, right? which is so powerful to be able to control that and you act instead of react. Yeah. So, yeah. well, I know Amazing. you got to get going. <laughs> thank you for coming on oh, today. Amazing story. Guys. Amazing person. Thank you Everyone go buy much. Perk. I'm yeah. buying perk just because of you. Where can they find you? What's it could taste like. It could taste horrible, and I'd still buy it oh, just because it, you're amazing. Thank you. But it tastes amazing. It dang does. It. I I will say it does taste it tastes amazing, really does. and we're really proud of it. Uh, we are online perkenergy.com. Definitely go to our Instagram because we have so many fun things that we're doing, and this new flavor that I I will disclose to the guys after yeah. we're off air. It's going to be show up there first, but just so many fun things, and we really have a community there. And just give yourself permission. Take a sip, breathe, enjoy. Love, Love it. it. Thank right, you so Gary, much, Gary. Get on here. Yes, it's your turn now. Right, <laughs> bring him back. Everybody, tweet. <laughs> Tweet him and say, you need to go on your turn. Yeah. You're up. Yeah. Plus, your wife made it easy for you, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. You laid it down. He's going to have a hard time topping you. <laughs> oh, I don't know. You did he's, a pretty good pretty job. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for coming. Thank you, guys. See you next week.